Okay, so if m varies directly as p squared and m equals 20 when p equals 2, find m when p is 5. So what we're going to do on this guy, this is direct variation. Direct variation has the shape y equals a x. Okay? With this one, we don't have x's and y's. Okay, we've got m's and p's. So it's going to look something like m equals a p squared. And I, I get all of that information from this opening little part of a sentence. m varies directly as p squared. The thing that uh, is most often forgotten is this little a value right here. He's there every single time. Don't forget him. Okay? All right, so to work this guy out, we're told that m equals 20 when p equals 2. So we've got a times 2 squared. All right? And so when we do the math, we're going to have 20 equals 4a. And then when we do the math again, a is going to be equal to 5. So once we once we have a, a never changes. A is always going to be 5, no matter what. So we can then come through here and look at all sorts of different values for x and find the different values that match for y. Or in this case, find all the different values of p that give us a value for m. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually work with the equation m equals 5p squared. That's the equation I'm going to work with. Well, the second part of the question then says find m when p is 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take m. I'm going to set m to be equal to 5 times 5 squared. So m equals 5 times 25. m equals 125. So our, our working model, our working model is here in blue. Our answer to the second part of the equation is down here. And that's, that's a bad color to put on there. So the second part of the equation is answered right there. Okay, number 21, the number of hours H that it takes M men to assemble X machines varies directly as the number of machines and inversely as the number of men. So this is a complicated setup. So let's, let's go one, one piece at a time here and figure out what, what it's going to look like, okay? So H hours. So H, H is what we're going for here. And it says that H varies directly as the number of machines. So that's going to be AX, okay, for the number of machines. And inversely as the number of men. So AX, and then inverse then, remember, is going to be when you have something in the denominator. In this case, it's the men that it takes, okay? So here's my setup, and this is also known as joint variation because we're looking at two separate uh, variables, three total, okay? We've got hours, the number of machines, and the men. So look at each piece. I vary directly with the number of machines, all right, and inversely with the number of men. We only need uh, the constant A it works for both equations. We only need that guy once. So this A right here, we only need one time. Okay. So go ahead and substitute stuff in. If four men, so we're going to have M equals four. If four men can assemble 12 machines in four hours, so this is the first part of the problem because you've got to walk through these things twice. Then uh, the question is, how many men will it take to assemble 36 machines in eight hours? Okay, so this is how this guy's going to work. 
So let's get a model set up. Put 4 in for H. A is going to stay A. 12 for X. And 4 for M. So here's your original first setup. So 16 equals 12A. A equals 16 over 12, 4 thirds. Okay. So my model then becomes, my model is H equals 4 thirds times X over M. Okay, 4 thirds times X over M. Remember that if A is 4 thirds, if you look at it this way, this is going to be the exact same thing. These are identical these are identical statements because 4 thirds is actually over the number 1. Okay. So now when I solve this this cat out over here on the on the right, I know my hours are 8. I know that I've got 4 times 36 and I know that I've got 3 times m. And for whatever reason, um People get confused when that variable winds up in the denominator. It's not a big deal. Cross multiply. Or, if you can't see that you're cross multiplying, multiply by the denominator on both sides. So multiply this side by 3m, and multiply this side by 3m. The reason that I can put 4 on the top and 3 on the bottom is, is that's the same thing as as 4 thirds x over m, which is the same thing as 4 thirds times x over m. So I, I did 4, yeah, I'm going to do 4 thirds times 36. So what I'm, what I'm going to end up with then is 24m equals 4 times 36. is 144 and then divide both sides by 24 so it's going to take six men to get 36 machines ready in eight hours okay the weight of a body varies inversely as the square of the distance from the center of the earth if the radius of the Earth is 4,000 miles, how much would a 200-pound man weigh 1,000 miles above the surface of the Earth? So, on this, on this problem, the, the Q for us is varies inversely. Okay? What this means is it says the weight of a body. In other words, this guy standing on the Earth's surface, his weight, okay, varies inversely, which is going to be A over the radius squared. Inversely as the distance from the center of the earth, distance from center is always radius. Okay? And, and then they tell us it's the square of the distance. Square of the distance means radius squared. Okay? So when we work this one out, they slip in all of the variables. Hey, the radius of the Earth is 4,000 miles. That's what R is. Hey, oh, by the way, we're dealing with a 200-pound man. That's what W is. So, on, on this guy, these are our initial setup. And when you're working uh, direct and inverse and joint variation problems, you have to work every problem twice. Once to get a model and wants to solve for a specific piece of information. So when I solve this guy, I'm just going to have 200 equals A, and we don't know what that is, over the radius squared, so 4,000 squared. This is liable to be a fairly large number because 4,000 squared is big. So 4,000 squared, That's is that 16 million? 16 million. So, so I have 200 equals A over 16 million. 
And what this means is, in order to get A all by itself, I have to multiply both sides by that huge number. So 16 million here, and 16 million here. So I get a large number for A. And I'm going to add two more zeros to this. So this is going to be 3.2 billion. Okay, so 3 billion, 200 million is equal to A. This is a big this is a big number. And and, and don't don't panic because of what you see. It's it's all good. Let me add three more zeros. All right. Well, now the question is, what happens when this guy is a thousand miles above the, above the Earth's surface? So we come back to our problem, but now we use a model. What is our model? W is equal to. And we can write this in scientific notation or leave it as three billion. Either way is going to be fine. Okay. So W equals that big old huge number. divided by radius squared. Okay? Well, I don't know what the weight of the man is. That's the question. How much would he weigh if he were a thousand miles above the Earth's surface? So I've got my A part. I just need R. Well, R is 4,000 miles from the center of the Earth to where the surface of the Earth is. And then the question goes, hey, he's a thousand miles further than that. So my R becomes 4,000 plus 1,000 or 5,000. That's what R is. So now we just substitute this guy back into our equation and we're good to go. So I'm going to have W equals 3.2 billion divided by... 5,000 squared. And this, now, if, if you do this math and you get a really large number, we have an error somewhere, either in our model or in some math that we did to set up the problem. Because think about this, if you are standing on the earth and you weigh 200 pounds, when you move away from the earth, your weight should decrease. Okay, so when I punch all this in, what do you get? I get 128 pounds. Okay. Z varies jointly as the cube of X and the square of Y. If X equals 1 and Y equals 4, then Z equals 48. Find Z if X is 1 and Y is 2. So we've got a joint variation situation here. And when you're working joint, joint variation, if you see Z varies jointly, you're immediately going to write down Z equals A. Okay? And it varies jointly as the cube of X and the square of y. Since it doesn't say anything about inverse anywhere in there, then we're going to write down the cube of x and the square of y. So this is my initial setup. If this question had said something like varies jointly as the cube of x and inversely as the square of y, then we're going to have something in a denominator. Okay? But inversely is never used. So we're working this guy out right here. We've got to work it twice. We're going to work it once with x equal 1, y equal 4, and z equal 48. So substitute those values in. 48 equals a times 1 squared times 4 squared. That should be 1 cubed and 4 squared. So 48 equals 16a and when you divide both sides by 16 a yuck a equals 4 
equals 48 divided by 16 is 3. Sorry. 3. That's your first time through. So our model that we're going to work with is z equals 3 x cubed y squared. And that's going to be our relationship anytime we are asked then to deal with this particular problem. So then they come through and they tell us, hey, what about when x is 1 and y is 2? Okay, find z if x is 1 and y is 2. So z is equal to 3 times 1 cubed times 2 squared. So z is equal to 3 times 1 times 4. So on this one, I get 12. And when you're working out your variation problems, you're always going to have two things. Always have two steps. Step one is going to be your model. And step two is your answer. So when you're working with direct variation, joint variation, or inverse variation, you're almost always going to have uh, two separate problems worked at the same time.